Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is part 12 on my Learning to Fly for Beginners series. And today we're actually going to get in the air. It's been a while. So we're going to go over the radio stack today. The COM and NAV radios. We'll look at the DME and I might even throw some other things in there if we have the time. So let's get started. So the radio stack is right over here. They call it a radio stack because it's a stack of radios. And here we have COM1, NAV1, COM2, NAV2, and down here we have our distance measuring equipment, the DME. And we're going to focus on these two radios here today. So let's take a closer look at the COM radio. So we need to start with our audio panel, which is right here. And here you can see we have COM1, COM2, NAV1, NAV2. And this is for selecting the radio you want to use. So if we want to listen to COM1 and COM2, we would set that radio. So there we have COM1 and there we have COM2. We can listen to both at the same time, but we don't want to do that. And then we have the NAV radios. We can select either NAV1 or NAV2. And we'll go over that in just a bit. Now these panels can be quite different. So we have some other panels to look at here just so you you might have a different look on your airplane but they all work the same way. You select the COM radio you want to use and normally you would just use COM1 or COM2 and the NAV radios. They have different looks. That's all I wanted to show you here. This over here is your uh, for navigation when you're on instrument approach. This is the outer marker, the middle marker, and the inner marker. These lights will come on as you cross over those points and we'll discuss that in a bit also. So COM radios can have different looks and this is the one I'm most familiar with. This particular brand here is the Bendix King. It has a standby frequency. Now this would be a combination set here. This is NAV, pardon me, this is COM1 and this is NAV1. So it's two radios in one. We have the COM radio and the NAV radio in the same place. And what's nice about this is you have here a standby frequency. So we want to tune our radio, our COM1 radio, to 122.8. That is uh, the Benton Field Unicom station. We have an inner and an outer button here. So the inner button is going to raise the kilohertz, the outer button, the megahertz. So we want to get this to 88. So let's just go here. I'm sorry, we want to get 8. So we get 8, 122.8. And now we have the flip-flop button here. And we flip that over. And now that's our... our uh, active frequency. This is the frequency we will be broadcasting and receiving on for COM1. NAV1 works the same way. We have the standby frequency. You plug the frequency you want in and then you flip it over. These radios work the same. COM1 and COM2. And there's an advantage, believe me, for having two radios that work this way. It really makes uh, your radio communication a lot simpler. Now there are other looks to radios. Here's the Collins COM and NAV radio setup. Yours may not have the look that mine has and that's okay but they work the same. Some just have the frequency without a standby frequency so when you change your frequency setting you are changing your active frequency. Just makes it a little bit harder when you have a lot of radio work to do. So as I mentioned, the common and NAV radios are operated the same, but the NAV radios are a little different. So let's take a closer look at a NAV radio. Now it works the same. We have our standby frequency and we have our active frequency, but we also have an indicator. We have a VOR indicator, and these two instruments work together. So here is our indicator for NAV1. And this is what we're going to use for lining up on a runway uh, on our ILS approach. What we do is we tune our radio to a VOR. 
and then we turn this little dial here and we're going to center this needle and that is going to tell us the course we need to fly to get to that VOR or we can fly from that VOR and that's what this little triangle right here is. This is the to from. So when it's pointing up like this it means that we are flying to that particular VOR. And we might as well throw in here the DME. Remember I mentioned the distance measuring equipment. And this is tied in with either NAV1 or NAV2. Here we have it set for NAV1. And let's just say we wanted to be flying to the uh, Reading Muni Airport that has a VOR with a frequency of 108.4. We would just tune that in to our nav radio 108.4 and we flip it over and as you can see we have 6.8 nautical miles and it's going to take us 99 minutes well we're not moving that's why so that's how the DME works it's tied in with your VOR and it gives you the distance to that VOR all right, I hope you've done your homework and you've been to skyvector.com and you've been to airnav.com because we need to go there to get some information. So we're going to go to airnav.com, we type in KRDD and we can get our airport information. And everything we need to know about Reading Muni is right here. But let's go back to Skyvector, it has what we need. Right here is where we are at Benton Field, and right over here is Reading Muni. As you can see, it's a very short distance. This dotted line here, pardon me, this dashed line here around the airport, this indicates class Delta airspace. Reading Muni is a towered airport and it is surrounded by Class D airspace. You cannot enter Class D airspace unless you talk to the people in the tower and get permission. So we're going to have to do that. So what we are going to do here is make a mini, mini, mini cross country so you can get the idea of just how that would be. So we're going to take off. We're going to go up here and the Sundial Bridge just happens to be right here and we are going to call the tower and let them know that we're over the Sundial Bridge. They will understand exactly where we are. We'll get permission to come in and we'll go through the routine of coming in this way for an ILS landing. So we'll come downwind and we'll turn around and hopefully pick up the ILS and be able to do a landing. I doubt if we'll be able to get all of this done in this video. Let's just see how far we can go. So what we need here is our radio frequencies and we can get this right here. Reading RDD we have 119.8. This is the tower. So you want to write that frequency down. We also need the ATIS 124.1. Very important. We also need the Reading VOR because that's how we're going to get there. 108.4. So we have these three frequencies written down and we're ready to go. Well, almost. Let's see what else we need to do. Well, since we want to do an ILS approach here, we also need the localizer frequency so we can tune our nav radio. So we need to come down here at airnav.com and down at the bottom of the page, you can see it says ILS or LOC slash DME runway 34. We're going to be landing on 34. So let's download that PDF file here and take a look and see what we need. And if we open this up, we can see that we have a localizer DME frequency of 108.7. So we need to tune our nav radio to 108.7 to pick up the localizer. Now if we scroll down a bit here to the middle portion of our approach plate, you can see the approach that needs to be made for an ILS approach. Here again is the localizer and its frequency along with the VOR frequency. Now notice the little dots and dashes here. This is Morse code and this is where you tune your nav radio. Remember that little button on the audio panel? 
Well, when you turn that button on, you are going to hear a Morse code signal, and you want to compare that with these signals. This is to make sure that you are tuned to the right localizer or to the right VOR. You want to make sure you're going where you think you're going. So you're going to get a dot, dash, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot for the Reading VOR. And then you can see the Morse code up here for the localizer. And we'll go ahead and listen to those. Now, there's a lot of information on the approach plate. And we may go over that stuff at a later time in this series. But I think that's enough for today. All right, so one of the things we want to do before we take off is get our radio set up. And this will save us a lot of time in the air. And that's why we went through that little process of getting all the frequencies. So let's start with setting up our radio. We already have 122.8 in our active frequency in COM1. So let's make this the tower for Redding, because that'll be a frequency we want. So that's going to be... 119.8. So we're going to set our standby frequency to 119.8. So now all we have to do when we get over there to talk to the tower is hit the flip flop button. And COM2, well, let's make the ATIS. Uh, that's going to be the first thing we're going to do. So let's make that 124.1. So I think if we just go up on whoops, wrong radio, 124.1. So now we have our ATIS set up. And now we want another comm radio. Do we need them? Well, let's put ground in there too. We might want to talk to the ground over there. And I didn't show you that, but that's 121.7. So let's make this 121.7. So now we have our COM radios set. We need to set our NAV radios. And the VOR at Reading is 1084. That's already in. And the localizer is 1087. So let's just change that to 1087. And now we're set. We're just going to leave it there for now because the first frequency we're going to use is we're going to lock on to the VOR. So now our radios are all set. We won't have an awful lot of work to do up there in the air with our radios. We'll have enough trouble up there talking with the tower and dealing with other traffic. So this is a really good way to set up your flight before you even get off the ground. Well, my friends, as usual, I misjudged the timing of this video. And I think it would be better to stop here and then the flight could be one video all by itself. So I'm sorry, but we're going to end this video here. And the next video will be the complete flight. So I hope you learned something here. I hope this helps you set up your airplane and gets you ready for your flying. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment, that would be great. I answer every comment. If you want to send me a message, that would be fine too. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.